Let's talk about pest management. And I'm not talking about the neighbor's cat. When some people see my videos, I get a lot of comments on how good all the leafy greens look. And they ask what do I do about pests. I get comments like, I live in Florida and I can't grow because there's too many insects. And the funny thing is, I'm in Florida too. North Florida. You know, almost Georgia, but still down there. And before we talk about what I do specifically, I think it's good to put everything into perspective. See, the way we treat our entire landscape nowadays, not just our garden, has totally changed from years ago. So bugs and insects have always been there. They're in nature. They outnumber us. They are everywhere. And what we've done, for the most part, is we've taken our entire landscape. We manicure it. Everybody wants it to look nice. Everybody wants a nice grassy yard. Nobody likes weeds. Now for the most part, the stuff, the vegetables that we cultivate are not naturally occurring in nature. We've taken those and crossbred and crossbred them and turned them into something else, just like our chihuahua. Bugs are naturally drawn to all of these things in nature. But for the most part, what we've done is we take our yards and we try to get rid of all the weeds. We get rid of everything. We put in grass, lay down sod, plant a couple bushes, maybe put in some flowers. And then we go and cut it every week, several times a week sometimes. And we keep it manicured. And we spray things on it and we keep things cut back and we spray weed killer down and we're taking away the natural environment that a lot of these insects, millions and millions of them, have eaten on for centuries. And insects have been around probably a lot longer than man has. Then we go make a pretty little garden. So we take a little space, till it up, plant some food, grow it, and it's all looking nice and healthy. Now from the bugs perspective, when they come into the yard, you've taken away their food source. And so as probably 99% of your neighbors. And then you've cleaned out a little nice spot for them and you made an all-you-can-eat buffet. You put a bunch of nice, healthy, good-smelling, good-looking food all in one spot. You probably planted flowers around the outside of it to attract pollinators. So if you were a bug, where would you head first? They're thinking, that was mighty kind of you. Clean up, make an all-you-can-eat buffet, set out the flowers. For the most part, we're just inviting them in like, like friends. But then they become the unwanted guests, right? And they won't leave, and they eat all your food. So these are just some things that I do. I don't expect everyone to do it, but to put things further into perspective, I want you to remember that you're asking the dumbest gardener in the world for his advice. So as far as spraying or using any type of pesticide, the only thing we've ever used is a little bit of neem oil, just like a teaspoon inside of a spray bottle with a couple drops of dishwashing detergent. And we only use that when the aphids get really bad. Me. Not let my yard go a little bit longer in between cuttings. Some of you can't. You live in a homeowner's association. But when all the neighbors are out there mowing the lawn and trying to get the most manicured looking lawn, I let mine go a couple more weeks. I let the flowers grow. And the weeds. And lots of really pretty flowers like dandelions. We consider them weeds now. So I'm hoping that when the bugs head on into the yard, they're going to find a nice buffet over here before they get to mine in the back. So hopefully it deters a lot of them and lets them be in their natural environment. Another thing I do is when some plants aren't doing good and you guys hear me say I replace them, I don't do it right away. I just toss them to the side and hopefully it's a nice snack for some of the bugs. I have my plants up on the table here. So I toss my old plants down on the bottom. I figure most of them are coming from that direction. They'll stop and eat those first. I keep an eye on my other plants. As soon as I see any sign of infestation, I remove those plants. And that's 
part of the beauty of this system. I keep trying to tell everyone about the leafy greens and growing them over and over and over again. The continuous harvest system is that when you see a problem, you pull your plant out, get it far away from the healthy plants, and put you a new little healthy plant in its place. So you keep these plants growing over and over and over again, and you always have replacements. Now, if you fill your yard up with tomatoes and peppers and things that take months and months to grow, unless you have like a bunch of backup plants sitting somewhere, when something starts to go wrong, you can't keep replacing them. But with these greens, when you get a little bit of a aphid infestation on one, as it starts, you can try to remove a couple of leaves. You can spray them with a little neem oil. You can just squash the little buggers with your fingers. Then if you missed a couple and the next week they get a little worse, you just remove the plant. Put another one in. And then for the next week or so, watch the plants around them in case any of the aphids got on the other plants and were starting to grow. So I like these white jugs. You can see the tiny little spots looks like pepper. That's the poop. As soon as you see that, you know that something's going on. Then you look around that plant and you start taking care of it. We planted some collards in the ground, which are pretty easy to grow. But I know that the aphids and cabbage moths and that love it. So hopefully these here attract them first before they get all over our plants. Then after they get a little infested, spray them with a little neem oil or hose them off really good clean off the plant and just keep it going even though it doesn't look the best it's still growing and it's still attracting pests you see i don't want to be spraying a bunch of stuff all over the stuff i'm going to eat that's just me so we don't use any pesticides but when it comes to pest abatement i'm more like this little kitty here I don't worry about it too much. I keep an eye on things. I let nature take its course. If I lose a couple of plants, I just think the bugs got to eat too. And even if I lose a lot, that puts things into perspective for me about what pioneers did and, and people who were lived for centuries before all of our modern agriculture and our grocery stores and restaurants on every corner when they grew food and her family depended on it and then a freak accident would happen like a hailstorm and it, everything's gone we've got uh, predictions for hail this week you know the entire garden might be trashed by next week but I'll just start over and that gives me a perspective of what other people have gone through for years and years and years. Sometimes just taking a look at things like this gives you a fresh perspective on things and it, it makes you appreciative of the times that we live in. So when I get a couple of aphids or a few grasshoppers, I think how much better off I am than people throughout the ages. You know, I know these little buggers are going to be pretty big in uh, about a month or so, and I'll be chasing them around my garden. But that's all part of life. So I'm not saying to be a hippie and just let your grass grow and all the weeds grow and, and just let everything take its course. This is just what I do. And there's lots of other channels out there that can teach you all that other stuff to take care of that if you want to stress out about it. Me, I'm just going to get a cup of coffee relax with the chihuahua and observe nature as it happens and enjoy it live to inspire keep on growing and be the change we'll catch you next time <laughs>